Hello. Um. So, yes, this is P two of this RMO twenty twenty four. So the i the question is that you have this function r of n, which is divided and defined as the sum of remainders when n is divided by these things. So we are given that, like for instance, for n equal to four, the zero comes from the remainder when n is divided by one. This is remainder when n is divided by two. This is when n is divided by three, and this is when n is divided by four. And similarly, you have r of seven also, same. And we have to find a positive integer. So I said this holds. So the answer is just n is equal to five. And the general argument is something like this. Um, so usually when you have say r of eight, if you're trying to calculate this, then for one, two, up to you will get some some quantity over here for one, two, up to four. For to calculate this, it will be a little bit hard because uh, I wouldn't say hard, but it will need some work but then when you come to the remainder when eight is divided by five it becomes fairly simple from now onwards because then it's just three and then two and then one because like remainder when eight is divided by five is just eight minus five so more generally the idea which i'm going with is that if you have k such that k is um 2k is greater than n or yes if you have something like this then the remainder when n is divided by k becomes fairly simple it then it just becomes n minus k because like and of course you have this then the remainder is just n minus k so more generally what we are going to do th this was for 8 so for n, we can calculate it something like this. So here you have some quantity which is for up to n by, okay, we'll figure that out. And then what is the least k such that 2k is strictly greater than n? That is just saying that 2k is greater than or equal to n plus 1 and then k is greater than or equal to n plus 1 by 2, c. So that is exactly what we are going to do. So this quantity is like n minus n plus 1 by 2 sealed. And then you have uh, the same quantity over again. Not the same, but uh, the same thing for n plus 1 by 2 sealed plus 1. Plus 1 and so on till plus n minus n itself okay and now we'll just rearrange this so again you have this random terms which call them s and then you have stuff from one two we'll just rearrange so take this this is zero we'll just not write the zero and so on till n minus n plus one by two sealed Okay, so the key idea is that this sum grows very fast because it's, um, this thing is approximately equal to n by 2 and 1 plus 2 so on till n by 2 is equal to n by 2 times n by 2 plus 1 by 2. So this thing is roughly n by n square by 8, which should in general, if we take n very large, then it should be greater than n. So that's the intuition. Now we'll just um, try to work with that and find a bound for n. So let's say key this quantity n minus n plus 1 by 2 c is equal to k. Then this thing is written 1 plus 2 plus blah, blah, blah till k, which is equal to k times k plus 1 by 2. So now let's try to better understand n in terms of k. Okay. So this thing, n plus 1 minus 
and plus one by two sealed minus one because I just added a one over there. And then this ends up being n plus one by two floor minus one. Um, so this is the value of k, which just means that k plus one is equal to n plus one by two. And basically the idea is that two k plus two is less than or equal to n plus one, which is exactly the bond which we are going to use. So this n is less than or equal to so of course, this two will cancel and this thing will turn into minus one. This is greater than or less than or equal to 2k. So the bond that we have is that k times k plus one by two should be less than or equal to 2k. And then we can just solve it because k square plus k is less than or equal to 4k. Um, one sec. Okay. Yes. So we get k square minus 3k is less than or equal to 0 and k less than or equal to 3, which is extremely good. This is because it's k times k minus 3 and k is, of course, positive. So then you get k minus 3 to be negative. So now it turns into a very sort of finite case because let's see. So k is equal to k is less than or equal to 3. That means that n is Okay, I mean, I, have, I will have to write the other side. So this thing, which is less than or equal to 2 times k plus 2. Okay, I'll just write it over again. It's less than or equal to n plus 1, which is less than or equal to strictly less than 2 times k plus 2. Okay, so basically n plus 1 is less than or equal to 2k plus this is 2k plus 2k plus 4 and it's a strict equality so it will end up being 3 and then the point is n is less than or equal to 2k plus 2 so if k is less than or equal to 3 then this is just 2 times 3 plus 2 which is equal to 8 so now we only have to check the values of n which are less than 8. So that should not be too hard. Let's just work out all the values over here. Okay. So let's see. R of 1 is equal to just the remainder when you divide 1 by 1 itself, which is 0. R of 2 is equal to, let's see, 1. So when you divide 2 by 1, the remainder is 0. Divide 2 by 2, the remainder is still 0. So that is this. R of 3 is equal to 0 plus 1 plus 0, which is equal to 3. Sorry, what am I doing? Uh, which is equal to 1. R of 4, we are told that it's 1. So let's just believe. R of 5 is equal to... First you have 0 and then when you divide by 2, remainder is 1. Divide by 3, the remainder is 2 and then 1 plus 0. Yeah, just to say this part is exactly what we were bonding over here. n minus n plus 1 by 2. This is equal to 4. Okay, nice. So this thing works out. It, has, it is indeed n minus 1. r of 6 is equal to 0. Plus 0 when it's divided by 2, 0 when it's divided by 3, and then same thing. You get 2 plus 1 plus 0, which is equal to 3. R of 7, we are told that it is 8, so we will believe them. R of 8 is equal to 0 when it's divided by 1, and then 0. When divided by 3, it's 5, sorry, 2. And then 0 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0, which is equal to, let's see, 6, 8. Okay. So the only value which works, you can see, is that is n equal 5. So that is the answer. Thank you.